Hey folks, and welcome back to the FY21 performance report video series. In this video, we're going to talk about specialty reports. That's going to include our non-public schools reconciliation, our Title I Part D Subpart Two supplemental data, and the Title III supplemental data as well. So if your district does not have any of these specialty reports that you need to fill out, then you can simply skip on to the next video. Otherwise, stay tuned and hopefully we'll give you some great information to help you complete the performance report this year. The first page that we're going to talk about today is the non-public reconciliation. And so the way that this page is going to work this year is similar to how we collect the uh, information in the 22 application, whether non-publics are going to participate or not. And so we have a template called the non-public schools ESEA carryover reconciliation document. And so what districts will do is they'll download that and they'll send it to all the non-publics that they have in their district. They, the non-publics will complete, they'll send it back, and then the LEA will simply upload um, one of these templates for each of the non-publics that they have. And so on that document itself, it asks all the information that you've seen previously on the reconciliation form from prior years. So just the general um, school information, and then it gets down into the carryover amounts. And so it talks about, you know, what is the balance? So what's remaining as of September 30th for the non-public funds? Um, row B uh, talks about anything that was obligated but not expended or paid out as of September 30th. And then row C is what is left over to carry forward. Um, row D then allows folks to decide what choice they want to make for options for the remaining funds, if any. So option one is if they have an extenuating circumstance, such as COVID, um, as why they could not expend those funds, they, then they could certainly choose that if they want to carry them over. Um, option two, the non-public no longer has need of the carryover funds and wants to send it back to the parent district. Or option three, both parties forfeit the use of the funds, uh, which will be returned to the federal government. Um, we hope that we don't ever see option three, um, simply because we wanna make sure that we're making use of every available dollar that we have under our title programs. Um, and then obviously if there's no carryover funds, then it would simply just be an NA. In addition to referring to what uh, funding we want to carry over or not carry over, um, we also need to talk about the non-public uh, goals and activities and narratives. So we have room for folks to put in um, indicators, uh, outcomes, uh, proposed outcomes and actual outcomes for each of the goals they may have had. This is a Word document, so you're able to type in these boxes and it'll just continue to you know, wrap the text. Um, so in the event that obviously you need more than just a, uh, one line, to explain you know, what your outcome was, um, it'll go ahead and just expand that box. Uh, we also have a box to describe any activities that were completed by the non-publics. So they'll need to make sure that they put in all the activities that they did. Uh, and then last but not least is the non-public uh, signature by the school official and a date. So once the non-public has completed the form, again, they'll send it back to the LEA. The LEA will then upload it using the upload uh, new button uh, for each of the non-publics within their district. In the event that a non-public wishes to give the money back to the district, um, the district is going to then have to go into their Create School and District Projects uh, page. And what they're going to end up doing is they will reduce the amount of funding uh, for the non-public by the amount in which they, they wish to not carry forward. So for an example, um, if the non-public said, you know, we have $500 left, you know, out of our 10,000 that we had, we really don't want to spend this, you can have it back. Uh, you would change their allocation, say for Title I, from 10,000 to 9,500. And then the district would have to reallocate that $500 that the non-public gave back to one of their own projects. So that's the non-public reconciliation.
The next page that we're going to take a look at is the Title I Part D Subpart 2 Supplemental Data. Again, there's only three districts in the state that receive this funding. So if you're not one of those, um, you know, it'll automatically <laughs> collapse the page. If you do receive the funding, you can check the box. Um, so if you're one of those three districts, and then it'll expand the page, and then you'll be able to go ahead and fill out all the information that you're used to reporting on. Um, this should be very, very similar to what you've seen in GEMS. Uh, we simply pulled everything over, um, all the same questions, all the same fields. So if you do have any questions on this, please reach out to your ESEA Regional Program Manager, and we're happy to assist further. And then the next part is the Title III. And of course, I picked a district that does not have Title III. So give me one second while I switch districts, because I can't show you the Title III supplemental data page if uh, we're not looking at a Title III recipient. So let's go to Augusta. They're our go-to district for most things. One, because it's near the top of the list and two, because they have a lot of the, the pieces that we're looking at. All right, so if I scroll, uh, scroll, scroll down to Title III Part A section, there is the performance report supplemental data. And so if we click on this, then it goes through all the same questions that, again, that you've seen previously, um, you know, it does talk about um, Title III projects carried out during the 2021 school year. So you put the number of L's enrolled during the annual testing window, but not available to take the access for L's or alternate access um, for an excusable reason. Um, and then again, you just go through all the same questions that you're used to seeing. Um, we haven't put added anything new here. We haven't taken anything away. This is the exact same supplemental data that was provided last year. So again, if you have any questions regarding the supplemental data collection, uh, please feel free to reach out to your ESCA Regional Program Manager. And we're again, we are happy to assist in any way that we possibly can. So that covers our specialty reports um, for, this, for this video. If you have any questions, again, like I've said many times in this video, please reach out to your ESCA Regional Program Manager. We're always happy to help. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in our next video when we start talking about our standard supplemental reports.